Hello everyone, welcome. Danny Gorolla here with Stamp in the Pink Barn coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. Happy New Year's everyone. Woohoo! Can you guys believe 2024 already? Wow! It just seems like I was just saying Happy New Year's to 2023 and there it flew out. You saw it and it went. It's like a sneeze. It just, oh, oh you anticipate it and then it's gone. <laughs> Hello, Wendy. Hello, Peggy. Welcome, you guys. Yes, I am happy to start a new year. Um, I don't really go into it making a whole bunch of goals because then I always, if something happens and I, I don't want to disappoint myself, but I do go into things hoping that, you know, I can make things, you know, better than it was the last year or, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a refresh kind of in my mind. So uh, this last um, week I've been kind of sitting down and kind of organizing what I wanted to do. I've been kind of trying to get a jump start on some of my weekly cards that I have wanted with that, um, with a new catalog that starts on, woohoo, on January 4th, our new catalogs go live. It is our... Um, little mini, um, this one is going live on January 4th. And then not only is the excitement all about the new catalog, but we also have celebrations coming up. So how fun is that? If you don't know what celebrations is, celebrations is this wonderful little brochure that you can earn free product out of it with every $50 spent. We do have a couple of $100 items in there. So once you spend $100, you can earn some of the bigger prizes as well in the, or not prizes, but items in this one also. Very, very fun. There's some awesome stuff in that catalog. Let me tell you. So, um, that being said, don't forget that our last chance list, which I have over on my blog, stampinthepinkfarm.com, um, our last chance list, or that's the carryover list, but the last chance list, here it is. Um, this last chance list will be um, done and over with on the 3rd of J January. So if there was anything that you still needed to get on there, I would highly advise you to jump on an order now before um, all items are gone. Hello, Lois. Hello, Marcia. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, so, yes, tons of stuff going on this week. Um, I am very, very much so excited for this new catalog. Um, I was kind of getting tired of, you know, winter stuff. It was, I was so ready for a new catalog. And sometimes it's not always like that for me, but I was really anticipating this new catalog because I've made so many Christmas cards that I'm just like, oh, I'm over it. <laughs> so that being said, um, this new catalog is amazing, full of wonderful things for your spring. Um, you've got your Easter, Valentine's, uh, trying to think if there was anything St. Patrick's Day in there. That one is one that always kind of gets um, not so much uh, attention to it, but it's not really like a huge holiday. Um, some fun Easter things, lots of flowers and fun um, like gardening. Just a very, very wonderful catalog. And I'm just, I'm so excited to see it and be able to make my pre-order with it. And, um, yeah, I've been having tons of fun creating cards to share with you guys. And yeah, I've been a busy bee. So, um, I have got so many things to share with you guys. I have got, um, Christmas cards that have come in. I want to share with you guys, but I think I'll do that at the end of this video because I want to get to making the beautiful cards that we're going to make tonight. Also, we've got our winners from two weeks ago since I wasn't live last week because it was Christmas um, and we had a wonderful Christmas, you guys. It was, oh, it was just amazing. Um, 
I don't know what the deal was. We went um, out last night and it seems like, you know, New Year's comes and goes every year. Never have we ever had a problem, but we went out to our friend's house and they live more in town. And um, as we were there, you know, throughout the whole time, starting at probably, mm, I would say probably around seven-ish, there were fireworks going off, you know, neighbors shooting off fireworks. Now they live in a you know, a pretty tight net, um, little housing development community there. And, uh, they live on a cul-de-sac on their road. Um, their neighbor was having kind of a little shindig and, um, had quite a few people over, but so we were sitting there and we were listening to music and we had a bonfire going and, you know, just talking, just catching up on life and do what you do on new year's, just kind of celebrating. We had drinks, we had food it was just a wonderful time. They just had a hot tub installed, so we went hot tubbing, which was, oh, my back thanks me for that and thanks them for that. Um, and as midnight was getting closer and closer, more and more fireworks and stuff were starting to go off. Well, then as soon as like 11.58 p.m., all of a sudden, people were outside shooting guns, like straight up in the air. And it's like, Where's the logic in that? If you're a responsible gun owner, you know that what goes up must come down, right? <laughs> I mean, so we, there was one that was right by us. We could actually see the smoke coming off the gun and it was in their front yard and their two um, younger kids were upstairs in their rooms laying down with their dogs because their dogs were frightened. And so they go out the front door and this guy's standing there with this big, long, I don't know what kind of gun it was, this big, long gun just shooting just straight up in the air. And um, so they wound up calling the police and whatnot and they gave the police the description. And the craziest thing is I'm used to being very, very rural. When we call the cops, it takes an hour or so for them to come out here. So a lot of people handle business on their own out here. But in town, those cops were there within like five minutes. It was insane. And there were seven cop cars that showed up. Um, she gave him the description of the guy. She said exactly, exactly what he was wearing because he was standing right in her front yard on her gravel. And, um, we watched him walk up the road. So we had told, or not, there was no we involved. I didn't talk to the police, but she had told them that, uh, he had walked up the road. And of course, when they talked to him, he had probably already put the gun away or whatnot because, come to find out he had said that it was just him letting off fireworks. Even though this morning they found a bunch of casings of the bullets in their yard. But at that point, there's really nothing you can say or do about it. But I was just like, holy mother, it was just insane. Yeah, that's, and I'm assuming that's probably what it was. Um, is because the fact that there was a gun involved and because they were in a very, very, very rural neighborhood or not, well, it is kind of rural, but a very, very condensed neighborhood where the houses are like maybe 10 feet apart from each other. They were in like a full on community neighborhood. And uh, it was just, it was insane. I've never seen cops show up so quickly and so many of them at one time showing up. But I'm pretty sure other people in the neighborhood were calling as well um, because it was loud and it was insane. And it wasn't just him doing it. There were people all throughout the neighborhood. You could hear guns like um, her, my friend's husband, he is ex-military. So he's like, oh my gosh, that's an AR and that's a blah, 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 blah. And that's a, like he can name all these guns by their sounds. I know nothing about it. I'm not a a major gun enthusiast. I don't, I mean, I, we have them, but they're not my jam. I don't touch them. <laughs> it's just not a thing for me. I'm honestly, I'm afraid of them. Um, just because I don't know enough about a gun that it's, I would ever feel safe with it. Now, if I had to protect my children, that's a whole nother story. I would mama bear up and things would happen. But Nonetheless, they're, I'm not a huge fan, but whatever. And especially being, you know, we are very, very, very out here far that, you know, when people shoot guns, it's no big deal. Houses are far away from each other out here. It's not a big deal. But when you're in town 
and people are doing that, it just seems very irresponsible as a gun owner to go outside because, I mean, I know myself, I've heard of people dying because of people shooting up in the air and then the bullet coming down and hitting somebody through the head. And so it's like, come on, it, 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 really? Because you want to make a bunch of noise? That's how you make noise? Get a firework. <laughs> I mean, just in my mind. So it was just, it was just kind of crazy. I, I, I do respect guns, but I, I don't, I don't know what my thing is. I, and I don't even know if it's the fact that I'm afraid of them. I'm just not knowledge enough in them that that's why I don't, I don't mess around. And my husband wants me um, to go have gun training. And actually me and my friend, the one that we were at their house, uh, she always keeps telling me, she goes, we need to sign up. They have a woman's class here at one of the gun stores that um, uh, actually do a women's training on um, different kinds of guns and what is more, um, I guess, not to say acceptable, but something that's more easier for a woman to handle. Because like when me and my husband have gone out and he's tried to teach me to shoot and it's been just a little handgun and trying to cock the top thing back, I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. My arms are so weak. And that's what I told him. I go, I would be screwed if I had to really get this gun up and going. And I'm sitting here going, hey, can you can you wait a minute? Don't rob me. Don't hurt me until I can get this gun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, it's just they have really good classes that teach you what's more appropriate for you and what is suitable for you. So, you know, I just need to bite the bullet, so they say, and go take that class. So, oh, and then it was really funny because, well, not funny, but it was really kind of coincidental that... This morning I got up and I was reading Facebook and one of the two, like our Tucson community clan Facebook pages, a girl was writing on there. She had a bullet in her hand and she was showing it and she said, look what hit my car at midnight last night. And she said that her and her daughter were in the car and they had just parked or at a stop sign or something and this bullet hit her car. And she said, luckily, you know, it had gone slowed down by the time it was trajectory back down that it didn't go through her car. But I'm just like, what in the world? Like, I don't know. Just maybe I'm just a weirdo, <laughs> but I just don't think that's appropriate. You know, noise making, get some pots and pans, bang them around. That makes a lot of noise. Hoop and holler, whistle. I don't care what you do. Just don't shoot guns. So then, um, so my daughter did amazing last night. My mom watched my daughter and my son stayed here with my mom to kind of help my daughter, my mom and my daughter out. And so, um, it was awesome that we got to go and not have the stresses of the kids or anything going on. Um, and so it was just a really nice time when we were there. Um, but then at, so we got home probably around like 1245 and probably about, I would say maybe five o'clock, my daughter started having grandma seizures. Like one after another, after another, after another. I finally had to give her a rescue medication this morning um, because it was just so insane. And my mom was like, she was fine the whole time she was here. I don't understand. But the moon was awfully full last night. I don't know if it was a full moon last night or if it was the night before, but full moons really affect her bad. Um, so I'm just thankful that my mom didn't have to go through that with her because my mom doesn't know how to handle it like I do because I see them with her quite a bit. Um, so I gave her a rescue med this morning. She has been asleep since about 5.30, off and on between the seizures. She'll sleep and then when she gets awoke, awoken by having a seizure and then goes back to sleep, she woke up for maybe at about one o'clock. She woke up for maybe about a half an hour, 45 minutes. She ate and then she's still asleep. So um, that's why I'm always kind of hesitant to give rescue medication because it does, it knocks her off her butt. But that being said, um, when she's going through those crazy seizures, probably the best thing for her is to sleep. But I was like, what a crappy way to, you know, ring in the new year for this poor little child. But you know, it, 
I hate to say it is what it is, but it is. <laughs> so she's been, we've just been kind of snuggling on the couch with her throughout the day, just keeping her comfortable. Um, she stopped having the, once I gave her the rescue medication, she stopped having the grandma seizures. And now she's just been having a few little cluster seizures here and there. So they're not quite as bad. But um, that's, that's that. That is what has been going on in life in the last couple of days. And um, so, yeah. All right, you guys. I'm going to get you guys flipped around. We're going to go ahead and get into these beautiful cards that I have to make for you. Um, and you're going to see the new, it is in our online exclusives. This set is available now. It is called the Garden Meadows. So just to let you guys know what we're going to be playing with tonight. All right, hold tight. I'm going to get you guys flipped around here. I think that looks pretty good hopefully that's straight and you guys can see everything oh I think I need to oh did you guys see that I got some new glasses I went and I had a um, eye exam done the other day because I knew my other glasses were a um, couple years old and I could tell that my eyes had kind of gotten worse again I have to take this sweater off I'm dying my uh, mom got me one of those really snuggy, like long poncho, big sweatshirt over jacket things. And I was cold earlier today. And so I thought, hmm, I'm going to wear that over and be nice and snuggy. But now I'm having a hot flash. So just the way life goes, right? So, um, yeah, so I went and I got some new glasses and I can see that they are filthy. But um, these are those, um, those ones that you put the little magnetic uh, fronts over them so you can change the uh, front of the frame of your glasses. So I wanted to try those because I thought they were really cute. So I got a pair of sunglasses because I have not had sunglasses in years because I've had to wear prescription glasses. And it was almost like to the day when I turned 40 years old that um, my eyes, I could no longer see up close with my glasses on. So I had to stop wearing contacts because I would have to flip my glasses up so I can see things close when I'm reading my phone or anything like that. So, you know, old people problems that I have. All right, so let's get into, um, I told you guys that about the um, new, oh, excuse me, the new catalog that is coming up that will be uh, going live on the 4th. Hopefully you guys all have your catalogs. If you have been a customer of mine, I've already sent catalogs to you guys. Um, if not, please reach out to me and let me know. There is a um, button on my blog. If you go to any of my blog posts, stampinthepinkbarn.com. If you go to any of the blog posts, scroll down through the blog post, it will say um, that you can... Uh, it's like a registration button or something that you can click on to um, get yourself a catalog mailed to you, both of those new catalogs. So um, let's get into the giveaways for last week. Let me get my planner flipped over here so I can make sure I'm giving the right items to the right people. This beautiful card here was one that we made. Now this was um, with the Magical Meadows is what I used uh, two weeks ago. This beautiful card here is going to Julie Wilmot. Julie Wilmot won this card for hitting that little like button. So down across the bottom, there are little hearts. There's little blue thumbs up. Go ahead and hit those on your screen and um, that will get you entered into one of my cards that I make tonight for liking the video. So this one here is going to Julie Wilmont. Um, Julie, I do not have any of your information. Um, you must be new to watching my video. So um, all you have to do is simply either message me here on Facebook, do a private message, send me your address so I can get this card in the mail to you. Uh, 
Um, or you can email me at stampinthepinkbarn at gmail.com with your information and then I can get this in the mail to you. So that goes to Julie Wilmot. Um, the next card here for commenting. So tell me hi. Let me know where you're viewing me from. I always love to see where everybody is from. But this beautiful card right here is um, using that two different uh, pieces of the designer series paper. We just kind of did a little tear down the side to give it a different kind of dimension to it. But this beautiful card here, it's a happy birthday card. So you don't have to feel like um, this has to be used for Christmas since it's over. So it's more for like a winter birthday. This one goes to Denise Wager. So Denise Wager, this goes to you and I do have your info. So I will get this in the mail to you. Hello, Patty. Hello, Courtney. Hello, Kay. Hello, Pat. Welcome, you guys. Hi, Vicki. Welcome. Thanks for coming in and viewing tonight. All right, this here goes to um, sharing last week's video. So all you have to simply do is hit that little share button down at the bottom. I'm going to share it right now to my personal um, feed. All you do is there's a little arrow down at the bottom corner of your screen, hit share, and then you're going to have to hit share now again. So you're going to hit share twice, and then it's going to be shared to your newsfeed because you never know who on your um, friends list would like to come in here and see all about um, some of the crafting products that we have in card making and just a wonderful time that we have here live. Um, but this here, and when you share that video, make sure you come back in here and tell me that you shared it because Facebook won't let me see everybody's names who've shared. So make sure you come back for me to put you in the drawing and tell me that you've shared. These are called the speckled, the adhesive back speckled dots. Now these come in some beautiful colors here and they do have the little speckles of glitter in them. These are going to go to Miss Courtney Awesome Darp. And I know Courtney is in here right now. So Courtney, these are gonna be coming your way. Thank you so much for sharing um, my videos and helping me grow my business. I couldn't do it without all of you guys. All right, so there is that. <clears throat> mm. Oh, I'm very, I need to keep drinking coffee so I can keep my throat clear. We were yelling and we were singing and we were hooping and hollering last night. So hopefully my voice will um, stick with me tonight. But let me go ahead and show you what we're going to be using tonight. So this is the gorgeous paper um, that is with this collection. This is the Meandering Meadows. That is the paper. It's got some beautiful watercolored images of um, a meadow. It also has the adhesive back dragonflies and birds that go with this. Now, if you were to buy the whole suite, you could get all this together. I did not bring the ribbon over because I think the ribbon is actually currently out of stock. Um, but here is the stamp set. This is the Garden Meadows, along with this wonderful, huge um, die cut set that is the Garden Meadows that coordinates with this beautiful stamp set. Um, now, in this stamp set, you can create this really neat little window so you can kind of pop up a couple of different dimensions so you can see the meadow going on behind. Um, there's also some grass and some bushes, um, a little mountain scene here. You've got a die that will die cut your little uh, wheelbarrow here. Um, the basket has one, the rubber boots have one, the little watering can. Um, the trowel and shovel both have one. Both of your little floral pieces here have one. Where is that at? Here and here. Uh, oh, and even the little quail. The quail can be cut out also. Then you've got two different dies for the fence or the gate here. You can actually die cut the gate as a standalone or you can stamp it and die cut that image as well. And I'm gonna show you both ways to do that so you can see how that's done. 
But yeah, this is what we're going to be using. Again, this comes in a sweet collection. It's called Meandering Meadows. It is in our online exclusives, so you will not find this in any of our catalogs. If you go to shopdannygorilla.com, type in Meandering Meadows. See, I can't even say it. Good luck trying to type it in. <laughs> but, or you can just simply type in Garden Meadows and it'll bring up all the products that coordinate with this as well. Um, I'm going to show you just a couple of cards that I have already made using this set. <clears throat> this is one that I had created when I first got this set and I used that big die right here, which it will cut out an inside and an outside, which is what I have done. I just simply put it on a piece of four by five and a quarter paper of that designer series paper. I cut that out and then I ran the outer part through my die cutting um, uh, embossing folder to give it a little bit of texture, left the inside alone. Then I used this green to make a grass kind of meadow behind the little fence or gate. And then I put a little uh, flower here just to kind of make this pop up off the front. So there's that card there. And then this was one that they showed us during, I think this was World Card Making Day, they had shared this one. So it's got a little belly band and then this just pops open. You'd put a little piece of white here and that's what you would write on, but this really showcases this paper in it. And it's just kind of one of those, uh, Oh, trifolds, or I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it's just really kind of fun. But then it just kind of shows off that little basket. I've stamped a couple of little flowers in Versamark on the side, but the paper really does all the work on this card. So let me get into the cards that we're going to make today. So for our first card, I have an extra little scrap here. For our first card, we're going to do kind of that same, the same um, principle as we did here, but instead of using the paper to do the cutting out, I used one of our specialty papers um, that is texturized to do as the frame. And then I put just a piece of the designer series paper behind that, almost like you're looking through a window at this beautiful um, meadow in the background. Then I took the little gate and I cut it in half to kind of give it that split like you could actually open them up and walk through them. And then I put the two little flowers on the side. So we're going to go ahead and create this one now. The paper that I am using and see here's one of the insides of the card that I made. This is got three different colors. You've got your shaded spruce, you've got the white, and then you've got the balmy blue in this paper. This is called the textured 12 by 12. Now this is in our annual catalog. So you can find that in the catalog. <clears throat> um, let me get out my first set here. Now you can see that I do have a new host code for the month of January. So if you would like to earn these three cards that you can create on your own, you will get a kit just like this minus my cards. You will get a kit that has enough supplies to make all three of the cards that I am making tonight. Um, <clears throat> if you use my host code and you have to spend $35 or more in my online store and you will get this in the mail with uh, PDFs, how to make each card and... Um, yeah, it's just a wonderful way for you to get, um, if you can't really do all of the products, you're going to get all the things that you need to make these three cards that I'm making with you guys tonight. So that's really fun because sometimes if you already have this set, but you don't have the textured paper, but you really like this card, or you don't have this designer series paper, you can always use other stamp sets with this, but this gives you the opportunity to get the paper in your hands to play with, you know, and to just make some beautiful cards. Okay, so these are all the pieces that I need. I think that's everything in my envelope. You're also gonna get three envelopes to go with your three cards. 
So with um, this first card, my card base is Balmy Blue. All the dimensions will be over on my blog tomorrow at stampinthepinkbarn.com. Okay, there is the uh, card base. Here is our texturized paper. So it's got like almost like a corrugated <laughs> texture to it. You can see that it's wavy. It's been like little tight scored in there, but it also has a shimmer to it as well. It is gorgeous. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this <clears throat> is we are going to take the big window die and we are just going to set that on there. Now, if you want to be precise, you can measure it and make it, um, you know, measure your sides to make it precise. I'm not that picky. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Because this has lines in it, you can kind of line the bottom of this up to kind of give yourself a straight line there. So I'm just gonna run that straight through my Stampin' Cut and Boss machine here. Is the forecast for tomorrow. Look for intermittent clouds. Alexa, off. Amazon, off. And a low of 38 degrees. Amazon, off. Jeez, why does that thing always do that? Oh, I'm going to have to unplug that when I go live. That thing is crazy. The last couple of weeks, it keeps doing that to me. And I know if anything like that happens, sometimes they'll shut my video down because of copyrights. All right, so um, here is the little piece that we're going to get. Hello, Chris, welcome. Okay, and then you're gonna have this, so you can hang on to this and make other cards with your insert, like you saw inside of my paper pack, but we're gonna use this piece here. I then brought in this piece of the designer series paper. Now, this is um, three and a half by five. Yeah, she almost listens to me too well. She's kind of nosy. <laughs> that's what I'm always, even with like my watch, that's why I kind of stopped wearing it during my videos because it will just start randomly talking. And I'm like, okay, quit being nosy. I didn't ask for your commentary, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so, as you can see, this is a little bit um, smaller than that back or the uh, frame here so that will be perfect so I'm going to go ahead and add some dimensions to this or I'm going to throw my dimensions on the ground which I just did so I'm just going to put a couple of pieces in here or on here these are the big dimensionals and then I'm going to come back in with some of the small dimensionals to fill in kind of some of these spaces Otherwise, it has kind of this warpy little effect to it. Hello, Karen. Okay, I'm gonna put another one up here at the top because this does need to go on the front of our card base. I know this almost looks like overkill with all of these, but um, I learned my lesson on that first card that I made that I did not put enough dimensionals. So it has kind of a little ripply effect and I don't like that. So I knew for this one, I definitely needed to go bigger, stay home. Um, so this will definitely pop this up now, but because of them having the overhang, they'll also, it'll stick to my card base as well. But then I'm going to adhere some, um, glue to the back of this also. I know, I normally never do this many. I normally go light on the, the dimensionals, but like I said, I learned from the first one. Okay. 
I need my take your pick tool so I can just poke a bunch of these at a time. So let me grab this. Now, did you know that your take your pick tool has both tools on this one end that you can flip it around to um, stab your little, ah, it does not want to get off of there. But I just stab these just like this and pick up these little dimensionals, but of course it's not going to work now. That way, you can just pull them off and throw them all away. Otherwise, you get a whole little cluster of them over here. Okay, there we go. I think I got them all off. All right, so I'm just going to take this, make sure I have it facing the correct way, and just kind of lay this straight down, just like so. Okay. Now, with that still flipped over, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my glue. Cause I don't want it to fall on all of my little dimensionals that they have to hold this in place, but they will pop that up. Okay, and now I'm going to just put this right on here. Just like that and see, and then that keeps kind of that warping from happening so bad. All right, there is our card base ready to go. Oh, you can use the dimensional strips too. Absolutely, Courtney. And I do have those and I didn't even remember that I had them until you just mentioned it. Oh my gosh. You guys, I have so much stuff that I forget that I even have them. But yes, the strips would work perfect because... The fun thing about the strips is you can actually manipulate them and curve them. So you could curve them right around here and that would work perfect. Because I know that's how you can also turn this into a shaker card is using those strips. So right on, Courtney, you are on it. All right, so now we need to have my little strips because we are going to, and I have already done one here. That's to go on that side so I don't have to die cut so many things. But let's grab the stamps. Ooh. I'm going to use my little boot here. Oops, and there is a fuzz. A fuzz that got stuck in between there. All right, we're going to use the black memento. We're also going to use this little one because we need to have two of these and since i have one already done we need to do the other one okay so here's my little gate and i know i should have my little um this little thingy behind here Give it a little bit of cushion. There we go. Oops. I figured I did that. I picked it up and it moved. So let's stamp it over again. Since we have two sides to our paper. Okay, we're going to do some coloring on that. And then I just have this little strip right here. So you would need to stamp two of those, but like I said, since I've already done one, so I'm not sitting here, you know, you only need to see it done once because we're gonna be doing two of them on there. So let's go ahead and color this in. I am going to grab my, uh, this is Smoky Slate Light and Dark. These are our Stampin' Blends. They are alcohol ink. I also need my Balmy Blue. And I need my, I'm going to use the, um, this is Lemon Lime Twist in the light and dark. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do my fence first. So I'm gonna use the light first and I am going to color the whole thing in with the light. I'm gonna do one side at a time. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my dark while that is still wet. And I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to this wood, just where I think there would be some shadowing going on behind here, especially this one in the back. like that and then I will go back over it again just to blend that all together because as it blends with the lighter on top of that darker, it will kind of lighten up the darker and have it kind of just smoothly run with that other color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this side. I'm gonna do the darker gray so you can see the difference here. This side has the shadowing done to it and this side doesn't. So this just adds a little bit more dimension than this one does. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's kind of hard when it's down here on the table. Okay, like that. All right, there we go. That is nice. I have to run, I forgot to run some down this little inside. There we go. All right, now let's color this in. So I'm gonna use my dark balmy blue on this one first this time because I'm just gonna put a couple of little dots. I'm just tapping around in these little flowers. Then I'm gonna take my light and I'm just gonna run around over those little flowers. Now you can come back in if you want it a little bit darker. Let's 
I'm going to use my light lemon lime. Then come in with my dark. Just like so. Okay, and I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna die cut both of these. So with this, with your two fences, I need to use the big one because I'm not cutting out the um, gate by itself. I'm going to be cutting it out since I have stamped and colored it. So this fits right over this. And this little flower, this will fit right over the top like that. Here's both of those pieces. Okay. There's that. There's that. I need to turn this fan off because now I'm getting cold. See, it's just the way life goes. I'm cold, I'm hot. Can't make up my mind. All right, now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut these two right in half like that. Then I'm gonna kind of round the little corners to make it look like it was meant to be a part. Just like so. I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of those. And I'm going to put the dimensionals more towards the center because these are going to sit like this. So all I really need to be adhered is the little inside of that gate to the inside paper there on my designer series paper. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere those down. Just like so, leaving a little part of that gate open. Now my little flowers are going to get popped up right on there. So I'm just going to take two little mini dimensionals. Oh, I didn't hear you. I thought something happened. Oh, no, I'm good. I was coloring, so I'm always quiet when I'm coloring. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to go like that. I'm just gonna put that one off on that side. This one's gonna go on this side, just like so. Give it a good little push. Now, what I have done, you can decide how you like yours. Um, you can either use the Balmy Blue, which is what I've done, or you can use your Memento. Either way looks great. But I'm gonna bring in the little sentiment that says, hello. And I'm just gonna add this little hello. Now you can do this before you um, add your little elements here, but it doesn't really matter. I like to see, because since this is not popped up, since your back designer series paper is not popped up, this isn't gonna affect you stamping. Now, if you were to put dimensionals on the back of this, don't try to stamp it if you have dimensionals because you're gonna always go off of part of that dimensional and then part of your word's not gonna come through nice. So only do it if you've got a flat surface behind your designer series paper. That's the only reason why I'm doing this now because I can see where I want this to go. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna put the hello up in the sky, just like that. Oh, and let me find my little butterflies, my birds and butterflies or dragonflies. These are the beautiful little adhesive back dragonflies and birds. Let me get these out of the way. We might need those to do something in the inside, but for now we're gonna just focus on the outside for the moment. Okay, let's see, where do we want a couple of these birds? I'm gonna flip this back over to that little spatula so I can pull these little butterfly or dragonflies up. I'm gonna put a dragonfly right there like he's flying off of that plant. We'll do a bird. Actually, I'm gonna do this bird as if it's swooping in on those trees and then we'll do this little bird like it's just flying by. He's just going out of that. So there is the outside of our card. Very simple, but a very elegant card that makes it look like you've really taken a lot of time, which it didn't really, but your recipients think that you've just like overdone yourself by making such an amazing card. So that is card number one. Let's do the inside of this card. <coughs> Let me grab an any. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stamp one of these little flowers in the inside as well, just to carry that over. Now we've got a couple of little sentiments here. We put hello on the outside. We can say every day is a fresh start. I can't imagine having a better friend. Happy birthday and thinking of you. I think with it saying hello, I think I'm gonna put thinking of you on the inside. I'm gonna place this right here like so. And then thinking of you. This has got some really pretty font to it. It's kind of that swishy. I need to re-ink my black here, I can see. Mm, come on, guy. Well, you know what, I need to grab a piece of scrap and stamp off once because this is not wanting to hold that ink. So I'm just gonna do that. So sometimes when it's a brand new stamp, like I haven't used the Thinking of You. If it's a brand new stamp, sometimes it's from the manufacturer. Sometimes it has maybe like a little bit of oil or a little bit of dust or something on it. So if your stamp, if you ever notice when you're stamping down, see now it's doing a lot better and it's not holding your ink, either use your chamois and clean it off or I've even heard of some people, I don't do this, but some people actually take a emery board and kind of just lightly, very lightly, run your fingernail file emery board over your stamp to kind of give it some texture. Um, it's not gonna stamp textured, so it's not gonna, you know, as long as you don't rub the words off and go crazy, it's not gonna hurt it. It's not something I would advise people to do, but I just know some people do it that way. Um, but, I like to get a little bit of ink on there if I can see that it's not working. Then I just kind of smoosh it around like this. Then that kind of like takes any of the, or yes, absolutely, you can use an eraser. That works too. Scotch tape works to lift the residue. See, you guys are full of ideas. Yep, that's much better. I'm gonna put thinking of you right here in the center. Yes, I agree that it will ruin your stamp. I just know there are some of our people who have done it. I've done it once in the past to one of my stamps. It didn't ruin it, but I just don't think I would ever do it again. I probably shouldn't even said anything about it because 
I don't want you guys going and ruining your stamps now, but I do know that you might watch somebody else and you might see them do it and it's just what it is. When they're in your hands, you do what you want with your stamps, but it's not something I'm advising anybody to go do. I just have seen it done. Okay, so now we're gonna add some color to this. Come in here and add my little dots to my flowers. Okay, that's the dark. I'm gonna go ahead and do it opposite this way. I'm gonna do my dark marks, which doesn't really matter. It's whatever your preference is. If you wanna do the dark first, do the light first, whatever. Sometimes it depends on the area and what the effect that I'm trying to go for. If I'm really trying to get a good shade on it, I do like to go with the light first and then start adding my dark like I did on this fence. Okay, this is now gonna go in the inside of this card. And there is card number one. I love the shimmer and the texture to this. It just really adds something to this card. I mean, of course, this paper in the background is just beautiful on its own, but there you go, card number one. Okay, let's get card number two. <clears throat> card number two is this beauty right here, and we're going to be using um, a couple of different elements in this. I am going to use that same stamp for the for the gate, but this time I'm not going to cut it in half. We're just going to use it the way it is. We're going to be doing the wheelbarrow and a couple of the little floral things. Now this paper in the background, this Poppy Parade, is a new paper that is called the Sunny Days Designer Series Paper. It is in the Celebrations uh, brochure. This is one that you can earn with a $50 um, uh, purchase after or starting on the 4th, so Thursday, um, you can earn this paper free. It also goes with our uh, stamp set that is called the Bright Skies Bundle, which is actually what I was actually just playing with right before I came over here. I was making some cards with it, but this is gorgeous, bright, you know, fun paper. If you look at that Bright Skies um, bundle, you'll see that it has clouds and just beautiful like little rains and flowers to go with it, kind of like your um, spring showers. Um, kind of whole idea there but this paper is beautiful and it can be earned for free so that being said you cannot purchase this paper you have to earn it all right so that is it right here this is the card that we're going to do next this is for a happy birthday so let me get out my supplies for that next card All my little scraps here. All right, now as you can see, this is kind of a different kind of fold. I wanted it going, you know, just a little bit something different. So that's what we're doing. So this is an 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half for my base. That's just thick basic white. Then I need my designer series paper. 
look how cool that is with that poppy parade. And then it's got just like a lighter tint on top of it with these flowers. The backside is petal pink. So that's going to be my next layer. That's four by five and a quarter. Then I have my little white piece, which is what I'm going to be, uh, what I'm going to be layering all of my images on. Now this is four and a half by three and a quarter. So that's gonna go next. Then I've got all my scraps to go ahead and stamp all my images. I've already got my fence mounted. I need to mount my wheelbarrow. I'm gonna put my little hello away. Bring out this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this first is I have, oops, I forgot my other little piece that I need to mount. There's also in this stamp set, there's this little stamp down here at the very bottom that you might miss, but it's kind of like a ground um, little piece. Like it could either be a ground shadow or like just a little um, pile of dirt that is a little bit higher than the regular ground. So we're going to use that. So I am using my pecan pie and I'm simply just going to put this right here, kind of in the center just like that, and I'm only gonna do that one for the moment. Then I'm going to take, because I want to um, have my ground and my sky separated here. So I'm using the small brushes, and I'm just going to do very, very, very little bit of ink. So I went a little heavy on that. And then I'm just going to lightly apply a very, very light coat. Just like so, okay. I will leave this close because we're gonna still add more of that dirt. Um, I need my pool party next. Pool party is a very, very beautiful color for the sky because it's very light blue, almost like a, um, aqua kind of blue. And again, just going pretty lightly on there, just making that separation from sky to ground. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside. We're going to do our fence. Okay, there's my fence. Then I have another little scrap that I'm going to use for my plants here. I need two of these little plants. So we'll do one, two. I should have went ahead and done more of those. Okay, I don't think that one's gonna fit on there. So we'll wait and do that with the wheelbarrow. Grab the little piggy vac. Suck up all those little dimensional backings. I know that's a little loud, but the little pig does a wonderful job. Okay, so now I'm going to take the wheelbarrow and stick my finger in the ink because why not? Okay, there's my wheelbarrow. Okay, there's that. Let's keep all my pieces together. And then I just need one of these. 
So we'll just do that right there. Okay, done with that for the moment. All right, now I need to color everything in and then we'll finish doing the ground on this. So let's go ahead and start coloring in the wheelbarrow. So for the wheelbarrow, I'm going to be using my, um, this is light and dark gray granite. I also brought in my pebbled path, which is what I'm gonna do the tire. in the pebbled path. And this is dark pebbled path. Okay, I'm gonna grab my dark gray granite and I'm just going to go around the lip of the wheelbarrow with the dark because we know it's being shadowed by, shadowed by all those flowers. I'm also going to bring in a little bit of shadowing coming down off of some of these plants that are hanging. Now when you use the gray granite, it kind of has a brown gray. It's not a blue gray like the smoky slate that I used earlier on that fence. It has more of a blue tint to it. It's a blue gray. This is more of a brown gray. I'm going to do the back little piece there because that's darker and I'm gonna do the underside of this one in the dark along with that and some of the bars across here. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that. Okay, then we're gonna come in with the, uh, this is the light. And I'm just gonna now kind of pull all those colors together. Okay, then go over the ones. I'm gonna use the other side of this to get. Since the sun is shining more on those, they can be lighter. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of shadowing to this wheel. Yes, this is a great set because it does have a lot of different options with the kind of cards that you can make. Again, it's really kind of one of those fresh spring sets. Ah, my little thing is stuck. Okay, now I'm gonna bring in my light and dark poppy. Again, kind of taking the dark poppy and just kind of adding a couple of little dark areas to these flowers. like that. Come in with my light. Okay, and there's my flowers. Now I have these two little flowers here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the dark on the front flowers here. Okay, 
just like that. And then on the, where's the other, oh, here it is. I'm going to take the, is this one the light? That's the light, so again, taking some of the dark and just popping it across there. Then coming back with the light. And then up here, I'm just gonna do the light ones on these little flowers in the back. Like that. Now, this will be colored in just a minute. We're gonna use the uh, Old Olive. So I'm gonna use dark Old Olive. Wrong tip. Of this, I'm just adding the little lines of the leaves for the center. And then I will come in and just kind of, again, dot some of these little bushes in the inside just to give some texture. All right, like so. Now I'm gonna use the light. Fill in some of this white space here. All righty, Courtney, you have a wonderful night and happy New Year's, dear. Yes, you can always catch the replay on my blog or you can catch it over on any of the replays of any of my videos. You can catch them over on YouTube. They're easier to find there. Um, I always get the question, where's that one video that you did a while back about the such and such stamp? I always try to tell everybody it's easier to find videos on YouTube and then it will tell you where to go when it comes to my blog because otherwise you can be searching pages and pages and pages of my blog. <laughs> and sometimes it's just easier to see it on YouTube. Now if you want the dimensions and everything, those will be on my blog. Okay, there's that. I think we are done. We're gonna use the light poppy because I forgot to color in the little handles here. Just like that. Okay, those are done. Now I'm gonna grab my pecan pie in my Stampin' Blends. I'm using the light and the dark. This time I'm gonna show you guys doing the dark first to show you that it still gives you the same effect. All right, now I'm gonna come in with the light.
Did you guys see what I just did? I boo-booed that one up. See how I colored the wrong? It was playing, it plays optical illusions with your eyes. So let me grab, I have another little scrap sitting here. I need to restamp that because that looks kind of goofy. Where did that scrap go? There it is. Okay. Um, 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 um. So that is one thing when you have lines like these fences, you have to kind of watch because you'll do what I just did. See, now I need to make sure I watch my lines as they come across so I don't do it again. Because I colored in this little piece here instead of the top one. And that was not right. It wasn't lining up correctly. <laughs> Okay, there is that. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Yeah, it took me a couple of tries when I first tried coloring this uh, wood in. I kept coloring in that seam and I was like, huh, that doesn't look right. But then I realized that was where the fence swings because these two things that I leave white are the hinges. So of course it's gonna be open there. Yeah, we're actually getting ready to get a big fence put down at the end of the property here. Um, my mom wants to get a solar fence in that it can be powered by solar and the um, the opening, little opener thing will, because I mean, being down here in Tucson, we have lots of sun. So when you can utilize things being powered by the sun, it's perfect. And then we don't have to try to run electricity down there and all that good stuff. So we've had the guys on the tractors kind of clearing out the front property. And it looks really good down there. Especially when you've got those trees that are kind of dying and they're kind of falling over. We have a big problem with all of our mesquite trees here. They wind up getting uh, mistletoe. And it's not the pretty mistletoe that you think of during Christmas time. This is kind of a big cluster that really just poisons the tree. And if you don't get that mistletoe taken out, it'll actually kill the whole tree. Um, so you can either, you know, depending on how bad the mistletoe is, and if it's already killed the tree, you either have to just knock the tree down, use it for firewood, or um, you can get up there. Uh, my friend, her husband is a um, arborist, so he comes out and he can trim all the uh, uh, mistletoe out of the tree so we can actually save our tree. Hello, Karen. Hello, Shirley. All right, so now I'm going to die cut all these pieces. So I need to move all my stamps so I don't stick anything in them. Then we're gonna get this part put together. And I'm gonna show you how pretty this card comes together. Now we're using a lot of elements 
in this set to make this beautiful background or uh, kind of image on this card. So I need the wheelbarrow, I need the flower times two and this flower. Okay, so I'm gonna get these cut. It's hard, I know you guys wanna see me cutting this and I would love to do it, but it's really hard to bring this big machine over there. And then it winds up shaking the heck out of you guys. And it's just kind of ridiculous. So I'm just going to do it back here on a steady table. And you guys will see the finished product as soon as I die cut these out. Piece. There's the fence. There's one of our little flowers. Bring in the wheelbarrow. Line those things up perfectly. Okay, I think we got them all. So there's that. Okay, there's our fence. There's one of our flowers. We're going to need that for our banner. these little pieces put on here so I don't lose anything. Okay, then here is our flower piece. Here's our beautiful little wheelbarrow and our other little flower that we need here. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside. <coughs> All right, now we're gonna bring in this piece here and we're going to bring in our pecan pie we're bringing this little piece back in again that's that little ground now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see my fence is going to fit like right there and so I'm going to put this one right over here okay then my wheelbarrow will cover that so you just kind of want to place things as you stamp. So down here, this piece is going to go there. So I just kind of set things around and see how I like them while I'm stamping this. Um, this one's going to go right down here for the wheelbarrow. I can go there, kind of just randomly stamping these. And we need one more right down about there. Okay, I think that'll do it. Okay, let me get this put away so I don't stick my hands in it. And then we're gonna start adhering things. So my gate is going to get adhered straight down. Just like so. Right on that little dirt. Okay. My wheelbarrow is gonna go right like that. I'm gonna tip it a little bit. And we're gonna pop that up. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna put that kind of sitting like so. Okay, this is gonna go straight down. We're gonna put that, adhere it straight down to our paper. Okay, like that. This is gonna get popped up, right, like that. And this one is gonna get glued down. Right behind this one, like that. We gotta pop this one up. Okay, that will go right like that, okay. There we go. So there is what that is going to look like. So we've got this one popped up and the wheelbarrow, and then the other three are adhered down right to our um, layer. We're going to adhere this down now. You know what I was thinking that would be cute? That um, we have a Easter set that has little Easter eggs. It'd be kind of cute to plant little, you know, when you go to hide the Easter eggs for the kids, you could put like little Easter eggs on the wheelbarrow, like tuck behind the little, I just thought that'd be kind of cute for Easter as well. This is a very versatile set. Um, I love it for that reason. Okay, this is now going to get adhered straight down onto that beautiful designer series paper, leaving a about a half an inch of a border. Okay, then what we're going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to grab a piece of scrap. Actually, I'm going to use this piece since it's almost perfect. I'm also bringing in, of course, my stylish shapes dies. And I need this little one right here of the banner. So it's the little thinner one. And I'm going to go ahead and die cut that out. Well, actually, I'm going to stamp my sentiment first, just so I make sure I can cut die cut it straight. Let me clean up some of these. Let's go ahead and do that wheelbarrow since we're already here. All right, let me grab out the sentiment. I'm gonna do the happy birthday. And I'm going to do that in black. Okay, just like so. Just stamp it straight down. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to go cut this out. tomorrow I have to go take down at our old house my little neighbor lady um, she's getting you know up there in age and she it's kind of like her day out she has to go see her eye doctor so she called me and she goes are you still taking me to my appointment and I said I am so she's all excited she likes to go out and have coffee afterwards or whatnot sometimes we'll stop and have breakfast but it's so cute because she loves to get out and just kind of visit and have a girl's day. All right, so what I did was I just cut off a little part of this banner because I wanna kind of shorten that down. And I'm gonna put this across the top up here with dimensionals, just like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some minis.
Okay, and I think I'm gonna put that right like so. Kind of hanging off the edge there. Isn't that cute? Mm. Okay, and now we gotta do an inside to this. So I think what I might do in the inside of this is I'm going to grab a strip of that paper. Have a little scrap here. I'm going to cut that at a half an inch by five and a half. And I'm going to run that right across the bottom here. Just like that, snip off that little remaining edge. this right there I think I'm gonna do this one here just like that and now I'm not gonna color those in because since we stamped right on the card it would bleed through if we used our our uh, alcohol ink so I'm just gonna leave that as it is I think I'm gonna see oh no I'm not that'll be too much but we did say happy birthday in the inside. We can either leave it blank for something that um, we need to say. Um, I can't imagine having a better friend thinking of you. Every day is a fresh start. That might be kind of cute for happy birthday. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it alone. Unless we do thinking of you again. Hmm. I think I'm going to leave it alone. I was actually thinking I might put the little quail but I'm not, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it because I, I like it just like that. And then we put our sentiment right in the center. But that is so cute. And I just love the way this card turned out. So that is card number two. Okay, let me put this away. Let me move some of my mess so we can get down to card number three. Hello, Kim. Hello, Bonnie. Welcome, you guys. Okay, card number three I think is so stinking stunning. I am in love with it. Let me put some of these little things away because there's some, actually I need that one out. I don't need the happy birth, oh yes I do need the happy birthday. See, I'm crazy. Um, The gate, we're gonna use the actual die cut gate this time. We don't need this. But we are gonna need that little ground thing again. So I'll put that right there. And the wheelbarrow can be put away. We're done with that. Did I clean that though? I don't know. Okay, there we go. All right, now we can move on to this next card. Now look at how beautiful this card is. Look at the shimmer and shine on this. Now I got this idea from Pinterest off of another card and I love this purple. <laughs> this is part of our online exclusives paper as well. 
It is this super shimmery. It comes in the Highland Heather, Pretty Peacock, and the Petal Pink. Beautiful, beautiful paper. This is called the Three Color Glimmer Specialty Paper. Again, it comes in Highland Heather, Petal Pink, and Pretty Peacock. And you get two 12 by 12 sheets of each one of those colors. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, this card, I have also brought in the dies. Uh, let me find it here. I have brought in, these are called the Nested Essentials dies. I have used these right down here to make these shapes. So let's go ahead and get into this card. Let me grab all the stuff that I need for this one. Okay, so as you can see with this card, it's kind of a, I guess you would say like a fancy fold or a fun fold. This card is not the full length because you can leave it like this. You can decide to put a piece of designer series paper here. You can do it how you want. There's a lot of different ways. I decided to just leave it white so I can show you more of the concept of the card versus adding something over here because I was more going with the sparkle and the shine of this whole voila behind that paper. And it really adds and grabs the purple out of that designer series paper. I just think it's gorgeous. And then of course I put a pair of little rubber boots in the inside to grab the yellow from here. So let's go ahead and do this. So you're gonna start out with your base. Your base is seven and a half versus normally we have an eight and a half card base, but this you're gonna cut an inch off. So it's seven and a half, and you're gonna score it at four and a quarter like you normally would. That's gonna leave you a little short side. That short side is now the front of your card. So very simple. That's the front of your card. You have a shorter little part there. Okay, the next part that you're gonna need is you're gonna need a piece of your three color glimmer. This I'm using the Highland Heather. This is three by five and a quarter. Now that is going to layer right on that little short front flap of your paper. Then you need your piece of designer series paper. Now see where you get that Highland Heather and some of those spots of purple in there. I decided to cut this since it's a six by six piece of paper. I decided to cut it at three by three <clears throat> down the center and then you could have your trees either off to the side because as you can see now if you um place an order with me of $35 or more and you must use my host code you're going to go ahead and get all three of these um uh cards in the uh I will give you all the supplies to make these three cards now just know that your paper may not look exactly like mine there is a whole stack of paper in here. They all coordinate with these colors. So just so you're like, wait a minute, I didn't get that tree centered, it's not in there. There's a bunch of paper. When I cut it, not all the trees are right in the center of this. So you might get a piece that has the tree kind of move more towards the side. You might get one where the tree is like that. See how it's off to the side? That's too small. But just to let you know that the um, patterns may vary. Just, just saying. Okay, so that is going to get adhered to there. Then I, okay, so this is where you can make this paper stretch even longer. Hello, Mary. Happy New Year, dear. Still in Canada, huh? You got lots of snow up there? So what you're going to do is you can decide whether or not you want to... Um, I Go ahead and watch the rest tomorrow. Yes, it is awfully late. But thanks for coming in. I'm glad you like the first two cards. Yeah, you'll have to catch the replay because this one is beautiful. All right, so then what you can do is you can take your net, that's the wrong dies. You can take your nested die. Now what I did was I used the largest one to cut this out. So you can take this and center it. Now make sure it is centered because when you lay this on here, 
you want to make sure that you're not going to see that part that you've cut out. So if you center it on there, you won't see it if you want to make your paper last um, even longer because then all you're going to do is cut the center part out of that and then you're going to come up with this. Now, I did it with a different piece of paper just to show you the difference. Um, so then you're going to take that. You're going to take your largest one and then you're going to cut out your piece of this. Then with a piece of scrap of basic white, you're gonna do the next size down. So then the second largest, you're gonna do a white little piece, just like that. And now I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these two together so they can get stuck. Now this paper has a tendency to kind of curl and I don't know why but it just does now I am going to use Terran tape on this because since this is glittery um, sometimes glue doesn't adhere like so well to it I'm not gonna say that it won't stay because it will but just to be on the safe side we're gonna use Terran tape because then we definitely know it's not going anywhere Okay, make sure you rub your tear and tape down. Get that a nice adhesion on there so then you can start pulling up your little pieces here. Okay, I'm gonna take that, place that right on the top of that. Okay, so that'll look like that. That is going to get adhered right on there. We can go ahead and do that. And since there's no glitter or anything, we can place that right down on that paper with regular glue. Okay, then what we're going to do is I just kind of, again, do an eyeballing situation. And I'm like, okay, I see that that needs to go. Measuring that, I'm going to say that needs to go to, what did I do this one at? This one, I did it three and three quarters, just like I was going to do here. So knowing that three and three quarters takes me to the end of this card, but then still gives me a little bit of a flap. So when I take my piece here, I can go to three and three quarters, line that up on the three and three quarter line, making sure it's straight because since you don't have a straight edge up here, you're not gonna be able to bump that up up there and keep it straight. So make sure you're on the three and three quarter. And what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you grab, move your cutter out of the way. You don't wanna cut that piece off. We're just going to score that, and you're gonna to have to push kinda of hard for the scoring, and you're gonna get a score line on there. We're gonna fold that. So you're gonna fold it in on itself like so, or fold it back, and that's what we're gonna get. Then this little piece here, we're gonna to go to the three and three quarters mark again, and, oops, hold on a second. I'm gonna tell you that and that's wrong. Yeah, now that is at the three and a half mark, okay? So then you're gonna take this at the three and a half mark and you're going to cut it. 
So line it up on three and a half because they're about a quarter of an inch difference in size. And then that will fit right in that section there. And it'll have a perfectly straight edge to line that up. Now these will come pre-cut for you when you place your order. I'll already have these pre-cut and pre-scored for you. So you'll just be able to line them right up and glue them together. So you don't have to worry about that. That's another part of um, when you place a, you know, you place your purchase order and you get these cards. You don't have to worry about having this particular die because I will already have it die cut for you. <coughs> because I want you to be able to just put your card together and not worry about not having all the things. Okay, so that is what we need. We are going to take this off and on this little piece that is scored, we are going to adhere this right on the outside line. Now to do that, again, I'm gonna grab my tear and tape because we are adhering the glitter portion down. Now, Wendy, how is your weather where you're at? And you said you're in Winnipeg. Where it, how is the weather there? Do you have a lot of snow piled up? Did you guys get hit with any storms over the holidays? Because I know they were saying it was crazy. Over the holiday, we had seen that over in Southern California, they had these crazy like waves come and hit the coast of California. And my friend's son had just gotten into San Diego. And so I was asking her yesterday, I said, I go, wow, I go, did he have to deal with any of the storms? And she said, actually, they had already made it up to, they were staying up in Joshua Tree camping for Christmas. So she said he actually was not in San Diego when that storm hit down there. Hardly any snow there. Wow, a super mild uh, winter there. Now, do you normally have snow during Christmas there where you live? Or is it one of those things like, at least here in Tucson, it seems to be that we're not super cold during Christmas, but normally if we're going to get like a dusting of snow or anything like that, it normally doesn't happen until like January. Sometimes even the beginning of February, we'll get like a little dusting of snow up here in the mountain. But... um other than that, Christmas has always been pretty, pretty mild here. So I'm going to line that score line up with the edge of that card and really push down on that to make sure that tear and tape adheres with my card base. Wow, normally tons of snow by now, huh? That's crazy. Okay, so now that lines up perfectly with the edge of my card. Then we have this little white piece here. This is going to get adhered right on there, right to the edge of that uh, glitter paper. So if I can hold it on there, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that down. Again, I'm gonna use some good old tear and tape since, um, it's going to the glitter. I'm just gonna run a little strip right in the center of these two. since we don't want anything lifting on this outside edge. Now, I should have stamped this first. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. But anyways, I've already got this peeled off here, so I'm gonna have to stamp it once it's already put on there. But typically do your stamping first. I was talking and um, not paying attention to what I was doing. Okay. 
Okay, that's gonna go there. Hopefully I don't screw this up. <laughs> All right, there is, so that is the mechanism of our card. We are going to put a base inside or a layer inside of here so it hides this. So you, cause that's kind of ugly just seeing it like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I have a scrap of pecan. This is where I'm going to use the inside portion of this fence and I'm gonna die cut that and you're gonna see the difference of what it looks like versus when you stamp and die cut it that way. This, you're gonna get this cute little die cut fence. Just like that. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. Okay, that we're gonna put right in the center there. Then I have a scrap. We're going to use this. Again, let me get some of this garbage out of the way. We're going to stamp two of those little flower pieces there. Oh, and see, and I did it in the wrong color. I need my shaded spruce. We're not going to use black. This one. We're gonna actually stamp this in shaded spruce and then color it. So shaded spruce. Twice. Give that just a couple of seconds to dry because this ink does take a little bit longer to dry. I'm gonna kinda get some of that excess off. Okay, now I'm going to grab my, this is my dark Highland Heather. And just in these front flowers here, I'm just going to color those in. I like when it is stamped in the color that you want because then it really just kind of makes those green, those purple flowers really pop with that green in the back. And then you've already got your greenery stamped since you stamped in that. So we didn't do black. So you see the difference there. Okay, let me go ahead and die cut those out. Okay, there's one. And then here is the other one. All right, let's move this. So then what I need to do on this little piece is I'm going to kind of center where I want that. Then I'm gonna use that little greenery piece. Again, stamp first before you adhere it on here. I'm doing this completely backwards because I messed up and I was talking. <laughs> doing what I do best, talking and not paying attention. So let's set this up here. I'm flipping this over just to give myself a little less paper underneath this so I don't screw it all up. 
and you could do it without this if you, you know, have done what I've done. But I'm just going to place some of the little greens right along here, like so. Okay. That's all I wanted to do with that. Then we're going to adhere this little gate right on there. <clears throat> I'm just going to put some glue in those thicker parts of this fence. Okay, kind of stand that right like that. So I'm kind of going more closer to the edge. So when this is closed, you'll see that it's kind of more favoring the right side. Okay. Then, what did I do? Oh, there they are. I was going to say, what did I do with my flowers? Now, again, because I was talking and I didn't stamp, I'm going to do this again since I have the fence on there. But I need to stamp using Highland Heather. I'm gonna stamp the happy birthday right above that gate. Like so. And then we're gonna pop these two up. I'm going to place this on the side of this, of that gate, and then this one's going to go on this side, just like that. Isn't that so cute? Oh, I love it. And then let's do the inside of this card. Where did my innies go? I know they're sitting around here. Ah, there they are. And just to bring some of that yellow in the inside of here, I think maybe we can do the boots maybe on this side. Let's see. Let me grab the little boots. Not that it's raining, but because the yellow, I think, just goes so well with this. Um, the boots might actually work perfect right there. Okay, let me grab this. Let's stamp the boots. I'm going to stamp them really, really close to the edge here. Okay. And I forgot to grab my crushed curry. So I'm going to, or not crushed curry, so saffron. Since we don't have crushed curry in this, even though that's the color that goes with um, this paper, I'm going to go ahead and use my so saffron. So using the dark. I'm gonna do the little buckles up here and then adding some of that shadowing at the bottom and around this. I'm gonna do that top lip. Okay, and then come in with the light. So fill this the rest of the way in.
Okay. Now, again, we did another birthday card. There is that, and then our little boots, you can see them. Isn't that cute? See, I like that much better. That just adds that other element of color than in my other card where I put the boots on the very, very far inside. I like it better down like this. I just think that really grabs all those colors and kind of ties them together. Now, to make this stay, I mean, it will stay closed once you get it into an envelope and that kind of stuff. But if you want to really push that kind of down, it'll stay a little bit more closed. Make sure you really kind of burnish this edge down so everything kind of stays in a tighter fit. But let me grab the three cards that we've just made so I can show you how wonderful this set is and versatile it is with the different cards that we have created tonight. Clean up some of my mess. We used a ton of dimensionals tonight, so I've got those everywhere. So again, to earn this kit free and you will receive all the supplies to make these three cards, you will get the pieces that will be um, die cut already for you. So just know that um, you will not receive the little embellishments. So that is something that you can add your own embellishments to. Um, you must you uh, use my host code and have an order of $35 or more, simply go to shopdannygorilla.com. That will take you right into my store to get all the dimensions and all the products that I used on this. You will find tomorrow that I have everything set up on my blog. You'll see still photos. You'll see the replay of this video. You will um, also have a shopping list there. So if you would like to get this and get the free items from this uh kit then again place an order of $35 or more using my current January host code and you too can make these beautiful cards all right you guys thank you so much much love to all of you for joining me tonight here on uh January 1st 2024 happy new year's to you all very very safe um day to you I know the day is almost over but you might be you know still continuing on the uh, partying, I guess you would say. But there you go. Obviously, those of you who are watching me are more into a crafty mood on this <laughs> New Year's Day. And I will see you guys. Be sure that you get your orders in by Saturday, the, I believe it's the 6th. That's what will earn you this kit. I will see you guys next Monday for um, another round of cards. So again, be sure if you want to uh, look at these products, this red uh, paper will not be available until the 4th, which is Thursday, because that is part of our celebrations. All the other products you will find are either online or they're in my online exclusives. So if you're looking in a catalog and you don't see this particular set, it's because it's online only. So there is a category in my store that will say online exclusives. That's where you're going to find this uh, whole collection and bundle with the stamps and the dies uh, because you're definitely going to want this and want this beautiful paper that coordinates with it. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Uh, Patty, you don't think you got the catalog. Um, Where were you when I sent it? Uh, I'm going to have to go back and see. 
I might have sent it to your Michigan address, but I can always, because you're here in Tucson, I can always um, get you catalogs. So you, you'll just get a double set of them, but that's okay. Um, because I know you're not going home to Michigan in a while, but I think that might be, huh, I don't know. I'll have to look and let you know, Patty, but definitely. All right. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>